Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in this tutorial, we will be discussing about the SQL injection. So in this tutorial, I'll discuss in detail about the common SQL injection technique as it applies to the popular Microsoft Internet uh, Information Server or the Active Server Pages, SQL Server Platform and more. It discusses the various ways in which SQL can be injected into an application and address some of the data validation and database lockdown issues that are related to this class of attack. This tutorial is intended to uh, for both developers of web applications and you can go ahead and communicate with databases with security professionals and it will be very easy for you to go ahead and audit your own websites after this. So. To start with SQL, the full form is a structured query language. I'll explain in detail to you later on as to how we can actually go ahead and use that in our Kali Linux as a later point of time. So SQL or a structured query language, it is a textual language used to interact with relational databases. There are many varieties of SQL and most of them are common to use such as at the moment and they're loosely based around SQL 92. The most recent is the ANSI standard. The typical unit of execution of SQL is the query, which is the collection of statements that typically return a single result. SQL statements can modify structures of databases using data definition language statements or it is also called as DDL. They can even manipulate the contents of the databases using DML, that's uh, data manipulation language statements. And in this tutorial, I'll be specifically discussing about the transact SQL, the dialect of SQL used by the Microsoft SQL Server which we will go ahead and later use for with through our Kali Linux with the help of SQL map to go ahead and penetrate into different types of websites. So SQL injection occurs when an attacker is able to insert a series of queries or SQL statements into a query by manipulating the data into an application. It might be a bit hard for you to understand that right now but it's not that hard trust me. A typical SQL statement looks like, uh, let me just open my notepad and I'll show it to you. So a typical uh, data statement would look like select ID or it can, uh, it can be like for name or it can be like surname or it can be like surname from authors that means will go ahead and select all the surname from authors. So you might be wondering it's quite easy, right? No, it's not that much easy. This statement will retrieve the ID, forename and surname columns from the authors table, returning all rows in the table. So the result set could be restricted to specific authors like this. If you want to search any kind of specific uh, people, then you could go ahead and search something like this. Uh, surname, uh, select ID, forename, surname from authors where for name where is the condition over here and the for name should be John let's say for example and surname would be equal to let's say Diggle so it will be something like this it will go and select all the ID which has a for name of John and the surname with Diggle John Diggle so that's how it will work so an important point to note here is that the string levels or string retrievals uh, John and Smith are delimited with single quotes Presuming that the forename and surname fields are being gathered from the user supplied unit, an attacker might be able to inject some SQL into this query by inputting values into the application. So one could do something like forename equals to j o query n and you can type surname equals to diggle. So it, you can do something like this. So this query string uh, then go, goes ahead and becomes like uh, you need to go ahead and search over here but over here there would be an extra apostrophe like over here in John. So when the database attempts to run this query it will 100% return an error because it will go ahead and check that John has three, three quotes over here which it will not accept because it will either accept uh, this specific as one uh, forename or this specific as one for name but it cannot go out and read a single word which has three quotes in it. So the reason for this is that insertion of single quote character it breaks out the single quote delimited data. The bit database then tries to execute HN and failed. If the attacker specified uh, input like this let's say for example I'll show you one more thing and he can go out and do something like drop table 
authors hyphen hyphen and surname would be blank if he goes ahead and inserts this thing the authors table will be deleted and I'll go into uh, deep into that later on as to how it works so but it will be deleted and it would seem that some method of either removing single quotes from the input or escaping them in some way would handle this problem this is true but there are several difficulties with this method as a solution first not all your supply data is the form of strings and if our user input could uh, select an author by ID presumably a number for example our query would look different it would look something like let me just go down and select it will do something like select ID for name surname from authors where ID equals two one two three four so in a situation an attacker can simply append the SQL statements at the end of this specific numeric input and once that's, that is done the attacker can easily go ahead and access things that you cannot even imagine and in other SQL dialects various delimiters are used but in Microsoft Jet DBMS that's database management system engine for example the date can be delimited with a single pound character the second thing is that escaping single quotes is not necessarily the simplest cure it might initially seem but for reasons I'll go into that later as well so I will illustrate these points uh, in further detail by using a sample active server pages that's ASP login page which access a SQL server database and attempts to authenticate access to some fictional uh, application so this is just a simple technique from my end so that people can actually go ahead and see how they uh, how much uh, their website is vulnerable so attackers normally go ahead and inject these things these queries into the URL so anything over here that can be inserted through the internet or the intranet is uh, dangerous and uh, this is the way how they go ahead and inject and destroy different types of databases and trust me guys it's not even uh, a bit secure because if the person who's actually going going ahead and trying to access your uh, let's say system by using an in uh, SQL injection uh, he can straight away go ahead and get multiple usernames and along with the passwords and the databases and once he goes ahead and gets that he can go ahead and gather any kind of information uh, everything from their birth date to their card numbers depending upon which website do you have and everything so yeah that's how it it works and that's it guys for this tutorial in the next tutorial i'll be continuing in depth with the sql injection